everyone, and welcome to Dolly Varden Silver Corp's Live Investment Summit today, hosted by SIX. I'm pleased to introduce our speakers today. We have Sean Kunkun, CEO, President and Director, and Robert Van Egmond, Chief Geologist. Sean and Robert walk us through a company presentation, and then we will be accepting questions live. So as a reminder, you can submit your questions at any time on the Q&A panel on the right-hand side of the screen, and we'll get to them after the presentation. And as always, the summit is being recorded, and you can watch it afterwards on Six.com. So without any further ado, I'll hand it over to you, Sean. Uh, thank you, Dasha. Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, it's a beautiful day here in, uh, in sunny BC in June. Uh, the snow is melting, and uh, we're ready for a very, very exciting and aggressive exploration campaign at Dolly Varden Silver. Um, as, uh, as the title says here, we're on a quest for 100 million ounces of high-grade pure silver in BC's Golden Triangle. Our trading symbols are here on the left, uh, both the Canadian and the US. And uh, throughout the presentation, both myself and our chief geologist, uh, Rob Van Egmont, will be making some forward-looking statements. Um, High level, uh, just to remind the audience here, we went through a presentation recently with the six audience, but uh, just as a recap here, uh, Dolly Varden Silver is a pure play on silver. Um, we have a past producing historic uh, silver mine located in BC's Golden Triangle. Uh, the properties produced 20 million ounces of high grade silver, uh, predominantly from the Torbert mine. Uh, this is exceptionally high grade pure silver, um, you know, close to 500 grams per ton coming out of Torbert. Um, what we have uh, in, a, in a modern resource estimate that was published in 2019 is 44 million ounces in a resource estimate. Uh, we've, we've got uh, the bulk of those ounces in the, uh, in the indicated category and at the Torbert mine. Uh, so we have two styles of mineralization on the property. Um, and, uh, you know, exceptional, exceptional high grades. Um, high level here on the, on the right-hand side of the screen, uh, we are in what, what is known as the Golden Triangle. So this is an area in Northwest British Columbia. It has a long history of some of the richest, highest grade gold and silver mines on the planet. And the two big producing mines right now are Predium's uh, Bruce Jack Mine, which is a very, very large high-grade gold producer. And then in the northern part of the triangle, um, we've got the Red Chris Mine. Um, so what we've seen here in recent years is we've seen a resurgence and a reawakening of some of the past treasures of the Golden Triangle. So some of the you know greatest gold mines and silver mines on the planet, including SK Creek and Premier, have now been reawakened by companies like Skeena, and uh, an ascot so we've seen tremendous um, investor appreciation uh, companies like skina have gone from a 30 million dollar valuation to an 800 million dollar valuation so what we're trying to do at dolly varden is very similar at what have, uh, some of the northern companies have done here uh, which is reawaken uh, past treasures so if we zoom into the area so we're located here at the southern part of the golden triangle zooming in on the left hand side of the screen here um, our silver endowment is wedged between, it's sandwiched between uh, Fury's Homestake Ridge deposit and Hecla's uh, Kins Kutch Holdings. So there, this is a very prospective area. It's got tremendous infrastructure. Uh, we've got a road that comes down to Alice Arm. Uh, we've got access to power, access to a port. So tremendous infrastructure and tremendous endowment. Um, so we are on a path to reawakening the Dolly Varden Silver Project, and there's a tremendous amount of prospectivity. Uh, we're gonna get into our plans for the 2021 drill campaign. Um, we've got ample treasury. We've got north of $21 million in the bank. So we're well, well financed to, uh, to outline a very aggressive two-year program. So I will now, uh, pass on this part of the presentation to our chief geologist, Rob Van Egmont, and Rob will take you through our resource and where we're going to be drilling. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Sean. Um, yeah, we're lo looking forward to getting started this year on, on our drilling. Um, we do have crews uh, getting camp ready right now for, uh, for the arrival of the drill um, in, in a few weeks. Um, 
we do barge everything in so that's sort of our start date when the when the barge arrives on the property uh, and that should be near the end of the month so um, we uh, right now we have a uh, uh, announcing our the start of our program um, but uh, we'll be focusing on both um, upgrading our resource at Torbert which is which is what's shown here as well as exploration and I'll, I'll get into the details of what we'll be looking for in a moment here but uh, first we'll take a look at the resource that we do have so this is this is a, a nice asset to have um, on top of the exploration potential on the rest of the property uh, we do have um, like Sean said about 44 million ounces 33 of those are in the indicated so we're, we're well advanced on on getting our confidence up on the resource most of the ounces of silver are at Torbert um, in the indicated you can see here uh, about 25 million ounces of that is uh, is in in the indicated and so we've spent the winter modeling remodeling the Torbert deposit and going over different scenarios sort of uh, high level uh, mining scenarios and possibilities and, and it's looking good for a uh, bulk tonnage style mining method because of the thicknesses that we see at Torbert. It's a, it's a volcanogenic layered deposit and then it's uh, cross cut by epithermal veins. So so our thicknesses are, are pretty good at Torbert and we, we're, we're seeing that a lot of a lot of the resource is actually captured in in uh, large sort of stopes so, so we're not going after narrow veins here. Um, yeah, so we, we announced a couple of days ago or yesterday that this, uh, the program is, is commencing. It's, it's a two, two year or two phase program. Uh, we'll be, uh, concentrating on upgrading Torbert. Uh, so that's moving what's in the inferred into the indicated and at the same time trying to expand out, uh, areas where, where the inferred and indicated sort of is up against the edge of the model so it's still open to depth and, and off to the side so the, the drilling that we've planned there is a combination of, of upgrading and then those holes will continue past the edge of the deposit and and quite often you'll get good surprises like we did last year when we drilled some areas that were highly inferred um, you know the, the drill spacing is a lot wider in the inferred zone so there's always room for uh, expansion between those holes and then in addition to, to uh, advancing Torbert uh, on the exploration side of things on the property scale, we have uh, a large alteration belt um, uh, associated with the silver zone that we'll be testing, as well as uh, on the western side, we're developing a gold uh, copper system that, uh, that we have a few holes in from last year. And we'll be taking a look a little bit deeper down plunge and see if we can expand that out as well. So right now our first phase is at 10,000 meters approximately, and uh, that will be getting us, you know, some more details to do for further planning on on the infill and then expanding any on any discoveries. So just uh, you know, from uh, bird's eye view here of the property, um, the main the main deposits are in red little flags there they're the four deposits that do make up our resource and then in the green the green uh, outline is geological formation called the hazelton formation that's a jurassic package of rocks in this case it's mainly volcanics we do have some sediments in the, in the center of the valley as you can see down the, down the middle of the valley and um, that's probably five to six kilometers of strike length and it's a large anticline, so we have two sides, one on the west and one on the east, that, that's sort of either side of the um, anticline that we can be testing. And as you can see, the, the black dots are all the uh, different showings that we have outlined from, from historic work, and they're all confined mainly to that Hazelton package of rocks. And that's the same package of rocks that hosts all the the, uh, the precious metal deposits that Sean was mentioning earlier within the within the Golden Triangle. So it's a Jurassic uh, basin fill, um, SK rift period uh, mineralization. So the four deposits: the Dolly Varden, Torbert, North Star, 
and wolf are mainly down in the southern end here. So starting with Torbert, um, like I mentioned, we, we did some modeling um, this winter, high level engineering, uh, looking at, at possible mining methods. And we uh, isolated out areas where we have large um, zones of inferred resource. So the confidence in that area is a little lower because of the drill hole spacing. So this year, we've planned out our holes to target those those areas and, and hopefully be converting a lot of that to indicated. Um, it's not always possible to convert 100%, but we've laid our holes out in, in such a manner that we're intersecting as much of the inferred as possible. So you can see in this diagram, the purple areas are, are large blocks of, of inferred resource within our block model. The block model is in blue here. That's our resource um, as stated before. And and we'll be we'll be targeting these purple areas. So while we're drilling this, you'll be go we'll be going through areas that don't have a lot of um, drilling within them. So uh, you know inevitably you're gonna be running into a mineralization between holes that, that you didn't know was there. Um, such as yeah you know, like last year we we drilled a hole that went through a series of lenses and, and it turned out to be one large package. So again, this this points towards uh, lower cost sort of bulk long hole open slope style mining, which is which is what you need in this area to get the ore out of the ground. You know, Rob, before you move on, just one comment I'd like to make, and, and this is one of the big surprises from the off season work. Um, you know, when you get high grade systems like this, often they're they're plotty. Um, but you know, one of the features here and one of the big surprises was uh, just the, the wide nature of this ore body. Um, you know, dollies dollies come up with drill intercepts that were going for 60 meters, returning you know half kilo grades consistently throughout. So this is a this is a really big wide ore body. And it's it's quite unique. Um, you know, you look at a lot of counterparts at this grade, and they're and they're tiny pods, and they're you know they're, they lack continuity and they're difficult to mine. That is not a feature of this deposit. So we're highly encouraged, um, and that and that's why we're moving uh, moving Torbert ahead. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And 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 also with with this bulk style of mining, um, your grade control is is easier because you're taking out larger packages of rock so you know you might have uh, pods of sulfides or a higher grade um, but in, if you're if you're mining a large block that all gets blended to an average grade um, closer to what your resource is as opposed to a sort of an up and down grade going into the into the mill um, yeah so uh, part of part of the Torbert uh, work is also uh, starting to drill down plunge uh, we do have holes uh, north of Torbert and, and south of Torbert that that are have indications that that horizon continues um, but our main our main exploration vector here is is uh, an alteration zone that um, that we have from airborne radiometrics so we've taken out the potassium uh, spectrum from the radiometrics and that's what's uh, shown in purple here this is a side view so we're looking across the valley and we have the radiometrics draped on the on the hillside, and then uh, underneath you can see the Torbert deposit to the uh, to the right, the larger larger sort of ice cream shaped ice cream scoop shaped deposits dipping at about 38 degrees to the north, and then uh, Wolf is is off to the left or north on this photo. Uh, that's a, that's more of an epithermal style, but it's sitting at the southern end of another one of these potassium alteration zones. And, and the potassium alteration also is logged in our drill holes. So we have a three-dimensional picture of, of, of this alteration zone and it's indicative of, of heat flow or you know volcanogenic uh, uh, sort of uh, sea floor um, uh, epithermal type uh, layers that get put out. So instead of a vein, it's being put down on a semi-consolidated sort of sea floor uh, with volcanic ash being piled on top of it, and those alteration heat cells keep going and, and give you that potassium alteration zone, which here is the surface showing, and it's uh, coincidence with um, sodium depletion, which is another um, indicator for the volcanogenic style mineralization. So we'll be working our way 
along that uh, stratigraphic horizon that hosts Torbert. We call it the Torbert horizon. And uh, it plunges down underneath the valley. And uh, from our work this winter, we've sort of, we've modeled it underneath these sediments that lay in the bottom of the valley. So even though on surface, our exploration of, of that alteration zone sort of ends at the bottom of the valley, we've modeled it now that it, it dips underneath the sediments and we'll be checking that out this summer. So here we're, we're, we've just zoomed in on Torbert a little bit just to take a, another look at uh, you know where we'll be infilling. You can see here the historic mining, um, the little little black horizontal lines are the different levels. Uh, this this mined out area in in sort of a lighter pink color was uh, from 1949 to 1959, and, and like Sean said, about 18 million ounces were taken out uh, out at this time. So you can see. Uh, the drilling has has expanded that out quite a bit. We've found uh, offsets that that were close to the workings uh, just by doing some structural work in in past seasons, and we'll be expanding those this year. And um, as well as working down down the plunge. And you know, Rob, what's exciting for me here is you know if you look at Torbrit, you've got a 50 million ounce high grade silver system, right? That's silver deposit. That's one of four mines that make up the resource, you know, Wolf, Dolly Varden, North Star um, are others. And the exploration potential to reproduce another Torbert on the property is the real prize and, and the real upside for shareholders. Um, you know, we, we, we believe there's a lot of growth at Torbert, but finding another Torbert and along this uh, Torbert horizon, there's several potential um, Torbert-like uh, opportunities and uh, you know, just finding one would take us through a hundred million ounces. Yeah, and yeah, then, no, exactly. That's and, and that, other, that that exploration on that alteration belt. You know, we have we have four and a half kilometers of of strike length where that alteration goes up the valley. So, um, yeah, the potential for for finding another Torbert is is still out there. And and now that we've sort of opened up the whole area uh, underneath the sediments. Uh, that that has another you know kilometer width and and this drill hole that you highlighted here rob um 244 um almost 50 meters and over 300 grams of silver um you know this was a surprise um you know we we were relying on some 1960s drilling in, in the resource estimate that were it was really understating um both the grade and the thickness so as we go through this exercise to upgrade Torbert and, and bring more of those ounces into the uh, measured indicated category, we're, we're seeing uh, grades that are higher than what we have represented in our 43-101. So in addition to growing, expanding, and extending, we're also seeing uh, we're seeing those grades go higher. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's an inevitable result of, of infill drilling, that you, you get more information and, and some pleasant surprises quite often. Uh, so, so outside of Torbert um, and that horizon, which which is on the western side of the valley, that we'll be following, and, and underneath those sediments in the bottom of the valley, um, we'll also be going towards um, the west, where we had some some good intercepts of uh, gold and copper mineralization, and this is more of a, a premier style. Uh, deposit uh, with multiple phases of, of veins and breccia. Um, quartz sericite pyrite alteration so it's a higher temperature system um, and there's there's a lower sil silver volumes or amounts on the western side but the gold and the copper picks up and Rob, I, want, I just want to reiterate here because you know a lot of the audience may may not know this but there is a, a high grade million ounce gold deposit on our western border so that home streak ridge trend is coming on to the western side of our property, and that's that's what we're looking to. Uh, you know, we, we focused a lot on the uh, on the silver trend here, but uh, there will be an emphasis. And, and we did make uh, we did make a discovery, a, a copper gold discovery last season that we want to um, build upon this year. So there's a tr there is tremendous gold potential in this western belt. Oh yeah, exactly. Well, like you like you pointed out on your on those first location slides, you know, this isn't just a, a single property. This is a whole trend where 
you know, a lot of these properties are all part of the same system. Uh, it's, it's sort of a, a mini little SK uh, um, rift system offset from sort of the, the northern larger areas, but all the rocks, the ages and styles of mineralization are the same. So, you know, besides our property, we have uh, Fury to the north, and then we do have uh, porphyry systems off off to the east, which which all tie into it. You know, it's the heat heat source for all of this. So it's not not just the Dolly Varden property, but the whole neighborhood has a, a whole series of, of deposits and, and mineralization over probably a 25 kilometer stretch. And uh, yeah, so and and then we have a few areas that. Um, that we haven't had any drilling yet and and we're calling that the southern gold belt so that's down that's off the end of the sort of main gold belt where we <clears throat> made some discoveries last year and um it's it's something that you know has some surface showings a few grams i think it's up to eight grams gold and and uh three percent copper um and that's sort of more of a uh, epithermal style uh, again uh similar to what we what you would see at premier with sort of multi phases of, of brecciation and veining. So we're excited to go go pop some holes into that for the first time and see what's that depth. Um, like I said, we've, we've done a lot of work this winter on modeling and part of that is taking some, the, some geophysics airborne that was flown in 2012 and that's being remodeled uh, given uh, new geological constraints. So, so we've, we've remodeled the geology and then applied that to the geophysics and the the new um, inversions have, have pointed us in directions um, and and pleasantly enough at depth below the the gold showings that we have there's large resistivity which is indica indicative of, of silicification so you know that that veining and brecciation and and quartz sericite and pyrite flooding uh, would show up as uh, as a resistivity. So you can see on the on the left side or western side here the large red um, sort of semicircle that would be our target at depth. We'll see we'll see if that uh, veining that we hit on surface expands out towards the depth uh, at depth there. Rob, have you ever had a busier off season than 2021? Um, you know, I, I think about all the all the all the engineering studies and. And you know you've got a larger team to work with this year, and you know all the uh, all the all the geological work that was done uh, generating all these targets. We, you know I just want to let all the viewers know and our shareholders we've had one of the most intense off seasons, um, and we are going into this drill program. Uh, you know not only equipped with the treasury, but with we've got a target rich environment here and a lot of tremendous science and we've got a great team that have produced some some tremendous tremendous uh drill holes uh locations and uh, it's i'm very very excited to see what we're going to be able to come up with this year yeah no we've really uh really stepped up the game and and the the exciting thing about this year is is that these targets are all um you know they've had multiple People looking at it from all different different angles, geophysics, engineering, geology, structural, and putting them together and 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 coming up with areas that are that are highly perspective. That's what's was pretty exciting about this year. So look forward to know, getting those, those drills turning. You know, we're pretty blessed. We've got you know a, a world class team. Um, you know that that Rob heads as our chief geologist, but in addition, we've got some very very great advisors uh, you know we've had people like jody gibson and ryan waymark and, and rob mcleod as a director don byrack like it's been all hands on deck and um you know it's great method methodology into uh generating targets um uh, both at, around torbert but also on the exploration side um yeah. you know in terms of big well, bulk um when, when yeah go ahead rob oh sorry yeah just just to add to that um uh, another another thing about this this season that's quite exciting is is um, last year we were the only only company drilling in the area. This year there's five other companies, you know, including Hecla, Libero, Fury, uh, Goliath. So um, in the case here, we'll, we'll talk about big bulk. Those are the porphyries off to the east that we were talking about. We'll we'll have uh, people in the neighborhood drilling 
um, nearby, and, and we'll get be getting more information from that as well. You wanted to, to mention yeah. Big Bulk? Yeah, well, Big Bulk is uh, is is a porphyry uh, target that um, you know we we own we own half the target, and uh, Libero uh, has optioned the other half, and they're, they're going to be uh, they're going to be drilling. So, you know, we've got uh, just you know as Rob mentioned with Fury, with Hecla, with Goliath, and you know, lit literally on our property border, uh, you know, we've got a carried option here uh, with Libero's drilling. Uh, we'll we'll stay focused on the high grade silver, uh, and, and we'll look at the the Western Gold Belt. But we've got a uh, free carry here with Libero's drilling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you know it's it just uh, it just adds to having a little bit of every style of mineralization in this belt. You know, porphyry, gold, and silver, volcanogenic, epithermal. So there's no, a lot of talk. You know, the best geology in the world and the best endowment in the world means nothing if you don't have social license. And, um, you know, the one, the one thing that we need to highlight here is we are a founding member of the BC Regional Mining Alliance. Um, we've got strong relations with the Nishka. A uh, third of our workforce is from Nishka Nation. And we're looking, continuing to look at ways um, to, to bring the Nishka in, um, you know, as, as partners and um and really make this a, a win-win for the, the province for for uh, the nishka for the local communities around the property and uh, and for our shareholders um and summarizing you know you know this is dolly varden is the vehicle for silver investors you know if, for, you know this is maximum level leverage to rising silver prices you know, I mentioned uh, silver was up 44% last year. Dolly Varden shares were up over 300%. Um, so this is, it's truly acting as, as it should, which is a strong leverage to a rising silver price. And with the, with the opportunity of discovery. So uh, where we can enhance that performance is by adding more ounces with the drill bit. Uh, you know, we've got a great management team. Um, what makes us very unique, you know, there was some, election results coming out of uh, uh, out of Peru uh, recently, uh, highlighting the importance here of safe jurisdiction, um, silver, and um, you know, we've got high institutional ownership. We didn't really get into the, uh, the, the, the ownership, but you know, we've got uh, between Eric Sprott and Hecla and other notable precious metals uh, owners, we've got about 85% of the stock in, in a few long hands. And so that uh, really makes the, the, the share price very torquey as we have success or as the silver price rises. So we've got, you know, what, what really struck me in terms of the Dolly Varden opportunity is despite being a hundred year old camp, um, there's new discoveries almost on an annual basis. Uh, so lots of opportunity, uh, only 3% of the property has been explored. So tremendous upside. Um, I, I see some questions coming in on the right hand side. Elmer asked, uh, you know how much money we have coming into this, this season. We've got about twenty-two million dollars in the bank, um, and so we're you know we're 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 cashed up. Um, we have no debt. And just summarizing, you know we're we are we've got the cornerstone resource, which pivots are a value, um, but the the real opportunity here is the prospectivity, the upside. Um, you know, Dolly has been. Um, in play before in terms of m a you know there has been takeover um, bids on the table in previous years by multiple companies uh, so that is also you know in a rising metal price environment m a activity is heating up we're seeing that in the triangle um, newmont took over gt gold for almost 500 uh, million in an all cash bid so you, you know you've seen yamana come into the area through uh, uh, participation in an ascot financing so the majors are here um, and the, you know you know the golden triangle. I just I've I've never seen it this active and this hot. Um, so you know we're we're quite unique in that we're pure silver. Um, we're in BC and we've got tremendous shareholders and we've got treasury. We've got team. Uh, you know it really encompasses everything you need. So I think with that maybe Dasha. Um, Great. Thanks so much. Yeah, I think this is a good time to jump into Q&A. So if you do have a question, feel free to submit them now. Um, to kick things off, what has you most excited about this uh, for this year's drill program? 
I, I think for for me, um, it's it's the drilling. It's the it's twofold. It's the drilling at Torbrit. Um, it's advancing Torbrit. But you know what what sort of help, you know gives me trouble sleeping at night is the excitement or the anticipation of a new discovery. And uh, that's that's what really I think the targets that we've got going into the 2021 program, um, you know, have got me really really excited. So I'm holding my breath that this is the year that Dolly Varden really performs in terms of on the discovery side. Um, but you know, I, I just think that with that resource, with the cash position, where where we are, where with the silver prices today. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of things that have us really excited. Great. Thank you. How do you keep down the cost of exploration and how do you maximize the return of exploration per meter drilled? Um, well, for, for us, it, it, it is a helicopter supported program still. And, and so that, that usually, you know, puts it a step up in, uh, in costs per meter. Um, but the way we kind of mitigate that is that we have that access road into the property, so we can we can stage things just across the valley from from Torbert. Um and so instead of flying everything all the way from from a base camp, we we just drive everything up the road, have a um, a staging area set up, and then it's just a quick hop across the valley. So if you can get your your helicopter hours down, then then that that really saves you money there, and then also this year especially with the targeting if we can use a hole to test multiple uh multiple targets as opposed to you know two holes for two targets if we can align it to uh to intercept you know in terms of torbit we can use a hole for infill um as well as extending it to uh to, to try and and expand out the edge so you know if you can if you can get multiple uses out of the same hole uh, that that brings your cost per meter down because then you don't have to drill as many meters. Well, thank you. Yeah, Simon is asking about the road up to Kitsault River. Um, what are your plans for that road? He believes that it is washed out. Yeah, yeah. It did. Last year there was um, there was some some heavy rains in October, and it washed out a few little sections. So we we uh, we are planning on on um repairing those and so the the road is the road infrastructure is still there um it's just some some repairs that we have to do to to um get around those washouts and and that's all you know we, we need to get a, a a permit to uh be able to put some riprap along the edge of the river there and um part of the area is also uh, uh the, the road was built 100 years ago and um a lot of the areas behind that are, are now sort of uh, nature or um, salmon um, bearing uh, estuaries hidden behind the roads. So it's a twofold thing that will be stabilizing those. Um, we're working with fisheries, Nishka fisheries as well to, to get the best uh, option for that. So that's, that's a plan is just to repair that and, and, then, and then it'll be uh, back to, back to normal. Great, thank you. Um, what areas of the project, in your opinion, are most prospective for discovery? Uh, well, you admit, a lot of the stuff we, we outlined, but um, th there's the, the obvious one is the surface expression of that alteration zone. So below that, we, we do have holes uh, near surface that have intercepted epithermal veining with, with uh, with silver numbers, so that would be the later uh, cross-cutting veins. Um, but the signatures are are strong enough, even in the downhole um, alteration. Uh, we we do take uh, XRF readings live as we're drilling, so <clears throat> we have a pretty good handle on on the the uh, alteration strength just through the potassium and sodium uh, depletion levels. Um, so we we do know that that alteration is still strong towards depth as we get deeper so um my 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 uh, um favorite areas is is sort of down that torbert horizon uh at depth and and as it dips underneath the sediments in the bottom of the valley great thank you 
Um, Farika is asking how deep the torbit mineralization is and what is the typical depth of deposit in the area? Uh, well, torbit, the, the southern end of it is actually right at surface. And so um, it goes from in, in feet from the 1350 level down to the 750 level. Uh, that's what they mined. So um, that's, uh, you know, converting to metric uh, on that, that cross section shows about 150 meters um, vertical, but it's stepping down at 38 degrees, uh, which is a, which is a good angle to be collapsing and things down uh, any shallower and any rock wouldn't, wouldn't collapse to the bottom of the stope. Um, but yeah, in terms of, of depth, um, Torbert North, which was an offset, that's 200 meters uh, vertical down from, from Torbert Main. So, um, you know, it's, it, so far we have it down to 250 meters depth, uh, sort of from surface to 250. So there's st we can, it's not very deep. Um, in terms of uh, mines in the area, it varies, but... Um, you, know, you can go anywhere from from surface to to a thousand meters depth. There's still mineralization. Great, thank you. Um, has the southern gold belt ever been drilled before, and what type of mineralization can be found there? Um, uh, no, no, that hasn't been drilled before. Um, there's there's historic trenching, um, which which gives us an indication that that the mineralization is of that premier style that I was mentioning where you have where you have multiple stages of, of uh, epithermal activities so stock work and then, and then brecciation um, so so no it hasn't been drilled before that is that's also an exciting area but um, you know until we get that first drill hole in there we, we don't know whether it, it goes to depth or not from the trenches so that that'll be an exciting to see if if it does go to depth because the surface numbers are are quite outstanding. Great, thank you. I know you uh, briefly went over it, but can you explain some of the other benefits of infill and upgrading drilling? Well, yeah, I mean the main one is yeah, like you, you said, I, I have I have mentioned it, but um, the main one is is the added benefit of of you know, you're getting a better understanding of the deposit. So when you remodel it, you can you can quite often come up with new areas to go to. So it's just it increases your understanding. But um, the main thing is is that you're you're getting a a better model to build your mining scenarios on. You you have more confidence uh, once you've upgraded. So you know after well, we indicated, well, there's also well, measured, which is even closer closer space drilling. Can I chime in for just one sec? Yeah. You know, the, the other thing is the best place to look for a mine is, you know, next to a mine. And I just think that, you know, in my experience, you get surprised with discoveries, you know, and that's where, um, you know, we're, we're trying to come up with a percentage uh, that we anticipate of growing um, as we drill in and around Torbrit. And, uh, you know, wouldn't surprise me if we, you know, if we saw, you know, 30% uh, growth uh, in this process of, of being surprised to the upside. If you, if you look at historic companies that have, you know, drilled around uh, or, or went to it through an upgrading exercise, that's typically what you're, what you're going to see. So I think there's yeah, a lot okay. of within and around and extending. Um, and, and that exercise has not been, it's taken place here. That's right.